Hello, Kinesiology 3010. Welcome to our part three of our descriptive statistics lecture. Okay, so we're starting week three here. We're going to go part three and part four this week. Um, so we talked about central tendency last week. We talked about mean, median, and mode. Um, and we, we talked about how those refer to the middle of our distribution or the middle of our scores. Okay, we know that our normal distribution or how our scores are spread out um, looking at a frequency distribution curve, so the frequency at which each of these scores occurs, we know that most of them should land somewhere in the middle, or our most frequent should be in the middle, our median, or our 50th percentile should be in the middle, and our mean, or our average, should all be in the middle for a normal distribution. Um, but we know this isn't always the case, and we need to understand that just because our scores are near the middle doesn't tell us much about what's happening on either end of that distribution. Um, so that's what variability gives us. It gives us the spread of scores or how our scores are laid out along or compared to each other, how spread out or clustered they are. Um, so it doesn't just tell us the middle, it tells us the, the outsides and what's going on around the middle. Um, so if, score, if all the scores are the same, so say everybody takes the quiz and everybody gets 10 out of 10, okay, that would mean there is no variability because all of the scores are the same. So there is zero difference between these scores. Small differences between scores, so maybe we just have scores of eight and nine, it's a small variability. Okay. Um, if we have big differences, so maybe we have some ones, some twos, um, some fives, sixes, eights, nines, and tens, okay, that's a very large spread or a large or a big variability. So there is, there's a lot of difference between scores from each participant, okay. Um, so variability can tell us the distance between the scores and the mean. And this is important for our further statistics that we get into, um, all of our inferential statistics. We do need to understand what variability is and what's that, what that is telling us about the distribution of our scores. Um, so I talked about how we were looking, we're, now we're looking at either end. Um, if we have a leptocritic curve, so here's a mesocritic or kind of a normal distribution here on the bottom. Okay, looks about half on either side. All of these are about half on either side, but this looks like we're distributing most of them in the middle and some out to the edges. If we have a leptocritic curve, we have very few out to the edges and most of those scores are clustered very close to the mean and there's very little variability um, along that line. Platocritic will have more variability okay, because we have a wider distribution um, and less of the scores are as, as close to the mean compared to a leptocritic curve. Okay, so, so how do we assess this? We see what it looks like visually. We have three different statistical tools to assess this variability that we're going to use for this class. Yeah, we have range, variance, and standard deviation. The range is the distance between the highest and the lowest score. So this looks at either end of that frequency distribution curve. Where is the lowest score? Where is the highest score? Where's the highest score? Where's the lowest score? And what's the distance between those two? Okay. It doesn't matter what scores are in between. It just looks at our high and our low. Okay, so it gives us some information, but it doesn't tell us what's happening in the middle. It just tells us where those borders, where either end of that curve is. Okay, if we're looking here, um, we have both A and B and they have the same mean. So the average score is the same, okay, but A has a larger range compared to B. So A score, low score and high score are further apart than in B where low score and high score are closer together. Okay, that means that A or curve A has more variability compared to curve B. Curve B has less variability because there's less difference between those variables or those scores that we have. Okay, if we look here, um, these are two curves A and B that have the same range and the same mean. But if we look at the shapes of these curves, we see a difference here. A, B is more leptocritic, A is more mesocritic, so B more of those scores are clustered around the mean. A, although the range is the same, the distribution is different, 
So group A will have more variability than group B because more of the scores are spread out in reference to the mean. So more scores are further away compared to score B. Um, so this just gives us a visual and it gives us some information. So range is good. It tells us kind of those endpoints, but it doesn't tell us what's happening in the middle. So we can have two scores or two groups um, that have the same exact range, but their distribution in the middle could be completely different. Okay, so here's an example. So I have test scores for this course, kinesiology, um, 3010. Okay, so pretend these are some exam scores. Now I need you to look for the highest and the lowest scores because we're going to calculate the range here. Okay, so find the lowest score, find the highest score. Okay, so if we search here, we see that 59 is our high score. And we see that um, 28 here is our low score. Okay, so we have 59 and 28. We subtract the highest score from the lowest score, and that would give us 31. So the range of these test scores is 31 points, um, points in this case, because it's a test. Um, so this tells us what's happening on either end, um, but it doesn't tell us what the mean is. It doesn't tell us what's the distribution look like where are those spaced out in comparison to either end or compared to the mean? It gives us some information, but not everything. When we look at variance, this is the measure of how these scores are spread out um, away from the mean. Um, so our notation here for variance is S squared. Okay, this is our notation. So anytime you see this notation, we're looking for the variance. So I'm gonna to refer to this as the variance um, as we go through here. Okay, so say we give, um, we have a test, we give them to all these individuals. Um, each of those individual scores, so each person and their score, is called an observed score. Okay, or that's our measurement there. Um, what we're looking for is the variance or the differences between these scores um, compared to the mean or the average. Um, so if all the scores are the same, the variance is zero because there is no change. There's no distribution. They're all at the same value. Um, so let's look at where some of these differences could come from. Um, so we have true score variance. So this is actually the real variance that occurs between people um, and between scores, between situations. Um, so this is our true variance with so maybe different skill levels, different knowledge bases, different abilities. Um, we have error score variance, which is caused by the measurement itself. So these are errors based on the measurement. Um, not every measurement is perfect. Um, so there is some assumed error and some real error when it comes to all of our tests and all of our measurements. And then we add those two sources of variability or sources of reasons for scores to be different. Um, and that gives us our total variance. Okay? And then we break that down into the individual samples variance. Um, because the total variance would be for an entire population. Sample is what we're dealing with in this situation. Okay, so if we look at it visually, most of our variance should come from true variance. Um, if we have a, a valid and reliable measurement. Um, and then some comes from error variance, and this gives us our total variance. So these are the total amount of reasons or the total possibility of having different scores using the same measurement. So different observed scores based on the same measurement. If we're going to calculate this, we have two different formulas. Here we have the didactic formula. So this is straight up by the definition. What is the difference between that score and the mean okay, within that sample? Um, we're not going to really use this one for our class because this could take a very long time depending on how many scores you have. If you're comparing every single score individually to the mean and you have 200 observed scores that's going to take you a long time to calculate. We also have our calculating formula. Okay, so this is a shortened version that takes into account um, all of those scores and, and simplifies the calculation process. This is going to be the equation we use to calculate variance in this class. Um, you probably recognize it from your um, first lab on your math review. I gave you a chance to practice with this equation. Um, so if we're looking at the didactic formula, so this will give you a, a broad broad view of this. 
we would calculate the mean, subtract every score from the mean, um, take each individual difference and square that difference, and then we would add the results together and divide it by the total sample minus one, so the degrees of freedom. If we have, say, 400 scores, that's a lot of mathematical equations and computations that you're going to have to do to get this variance number. Okay, it's pretty easy if we have maybe like five, so we can take each individual score, subtract it from the mean, get the deviation, square it, it gets rid of, um, gets rid of any negatives um, in that situation, um, and will give us our variance. Okay, so it's pretty simple. We, get, we have our equations here, we have our total deviation, or some of the, the sum of the scores, um, and we have our mean, and we have our total number of cases. We plug those through, it's going to give us um, our total variance based on those scores. But we first have to compute the mean, okay, so that takes us some time, and then we have to subtract every score from the mean, which takes even more time. Um, so I'm not gonna make you do that, within this class, that would be um, beyond what we need to do. And when we have an easier way, we're going to use that easier way because it is, it is more effective, more efficient. So now we have these same scores. We have these same five students that each took the quiz and have five different scores and we want to compute the variance. Remember before we calculated 2.5 as our variance, um, using the didactic formula, keep that in your head when we look at these. Uh, so now we're going to use the calculating formula um, to compute these. So in order to do this, okay, we have to sum our scores and then also take the sum of squared scores. Okay, so we have to take each individual score and sum them. So finding sum of x and then find sum of x squared, which is each score squared and then summing those squared scores or adding all of those squared scores together. So this gives us our information that we need, and then we have our sample size, so how many scores we have. So we take our information we have, we have our variance equals the sum of x squared, so the sum of the scores squared, minus the sum of the scores quantity squared, or sum of x quantity squared, so this is sum of x squared, compared to sum of x squared, which is each of those individual scores squared on their own, and then sum together after, okay? Um, we divide these, okay, the sum of x quantity squared by the sample size, and we divide the entire top equation or the entire numerator by the degrees of freedom or the sample size minus one. Okay, we do this because we're working with a piece of the population rather than the entire population. Um, so this this keeps us or gives us a little bit of leeway when it comes to the total amount of change that can happen. So we'll plug in those numbers. So see, sum of sum of x squared. So sum of scores squared here. Sum of x quantity squared. So the quantity that is the sum of x squared divided by the sample size all over the sample size minus one. That would give us. 10 over four or 2.5. So same answer is okay, so we can use either form. We're going to use the calculating formula for this class. So remember how to do it, um, practice, do it on your own. You can make up scores and calculate the variance. Um, we'll do some more practice within our labs also. Okay. With standard deviation, okay, this is the square root of the variance. So we have to calculate variance first to get our standard deviation. Okay, but this uses the mean as our distribution point and tells us how these scores are being spread compared to the mean. Okay, so this is the square root of the variance. Um, and we use this for more descriptive statistics to understand how large this spread is. So we know that with our standard deviations that plus or minus one standard deviation, so say this red zone here, Okay, right here in the middle is our mean. If we go over one line, that is one standard deviation. Okay, so whatever we calculated the variance as and square rooted it, that's our standard deviation. Within 
one standard deviation to the right plus one standard deviation to the left or positive and negative compared to the mean. We know that 68.26% of scores will fall within that area. Okay, so that means 34.13 scores, percent of the scores will be above or within one standard deviation above the mean and the same will be within one standard deviation below the mean. Okay, and as we go further out, you see that the area is less as we go further and further. Okay, but if we're going two standard deviations out, we know that there's another 13.59% in the green. So that gives us a total of 95.44% of scores will be plus or minus two standard deviations away from the mean. So this is a, a pretty large range. And we know that 99.74% will be within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay. So to give you a, a numerical visual here, okay, we know that almost, almost all the scores will be within plus or minus three standard deviations. Okay, so the mean plus three standard deviations. Okay, or you can see it a little bit visual here, plus one standard deviation, plus two standard deviations, plus three, okay, and then plus one um, in the negative, two in the negative, and three in the negative. Okay, or that is the mean minus one standard deviation, the mean minus two standard deviations, the mean minus three standard deviations. Okay, so this tells us the spread. If we have a large standard deviation compared to the mean, we know that there's a pretty large variance and we know our scores are gonna be spread out further and further, okay? And just a quick reminder, our standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Okay, you see where that S comes from, from variance? That S notation is our standard deviation squared or the square root of our square root of the variance gives us the standard deviation. So they, they all kind of fall in there um, mathematically so you can understand that. Okay, so back to our previous example. Okay, we have our variance calculation here. The standard deviation of that would be the square root of our variance that we calculated here, which would be 1.58 is the standard deviation. So based on these scores, okay, these five scores, we know that our mean Okay, we, we didn't calculate our mean, we can calculate our mean. Um, okay, you can calculate it on your own, but the mean plus 1.58, the mean plus 3.16, uh, and further and further on either side. Okay, so we're just adding on and telling us that within these scores, 99.73% of the scores should fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So it's very unlikely that a score will be observed above two standard deviations away from the mean. There's only a 2% chance of seeing that. Um, we'll go deeper into why we use this. We'll understand how to calculate it um, and how to interpret when you're reading research and understanding what these terms mean. All right, uh, we'll come back for part four of our descriptive statistics later on this week. Thank you so much for watching um, and please review your lab lectures and your lab assignments. Thank you and goodbye.